Hello again, uh, Joshua Hatton here to do my second review of the day. Uh, this is of another Single Cast Nation release. It will be coming in on the same container as our uh, Buna Haben. Um, this second uh, release that I'm about to discuss, you can see that. Now, there's a lot of debate on how this is pronounced. I've asked a few people, and there are two different pronunciations um, of this particular word that I've heard of. Now, first off, before I tell you what that is, um, this is whiskey distilled at the Loch Lomond Distillery. Uh, Loch Lomond is uh, known for producing uh, the Inchmurin whiskey. Um, they have a single grain that they do um, at the distillery as well, so they're able to produce different types of whiskeys. And then this is their heavily peated. So the two pronunciations that I've heard have been Cruft and Gia, and one that I think may be more accurate, Cruft and Gaia. Um, I'm not quite sure. Maybe someone out there who speaks... Um, uh, Gallic can tell me what it is, so for now we'll just call it Peated Loch Lomond. Much like our uh, Tobermory that we released, our 10-year-old Tobermory a bit back, um, we did not list that as being a Lechig. So Tobermory produces a peated whiskey called Lechig. Uh, but that's not the name of our distillery. As you know on our labels, they say distilled at X distillery. So if we were to say distilled at Lechig distillery or distilled at Cruft and Gaia distillery, it wouldn't be accurate. So we say distilled at Tobermory distillery or like this one, distilled at Loch Lomond distillery. And then toward the bottom of our label, it lists it as being heavily peated. So much like our 10-year-old Tobermory, Chig. Um, this Croft and Gaia is also 10 years old and is also from a refill bourbon hoggy. Um, this one's bottled at 56.6% alcohol and just like the Bunhaben that, that um, I reviewed a little bit ago, hopefully you had a chance to uh, to watch that video. Uh, we're just waiting for the labels to be printed so that they can be delivered to our bottling hall, applied, and then we can import this whiskey. Um, I'm not sure if you've ever had uh, a Croft and Gaia whiskey, peated Loch Lomond. Uh, I've had a few in my lifetime, and if you thought Le Chigs were funky, crazy whiskeys, this has it beat, hands down. Um, Jason, uh, Jason Johnson Yellen, he often refers to whiskeys from Le Chig or, or this, this particular style of peated whiskey as a fetishist whiskey. Similar to, say, our two-year-old Westland, uh, heavily peated, uh, matured in a first fill Oloroso sherry cask. You know, this is a fetishist whiskey, uh, a whiskey that you people are either going to love or they're going to absolutely hate it. Um, we found over and over again the people that are buying our whiskeys uh, seem to follow in, uh, in our view that, that these funkier whiskeys are absolutely beautiful. There, there's something pretty in these funky whiskeys. Uh, so I'm very excited to talk about this one. Um, the color is incredibly light. Again, refill bourbon, uh, so the, 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 you know, the cask isn't going to lend much color to it. So, And one of the things that we like about whiskeys from refill casks is that these casks, not forcing their flavor on the whiskey, allow the, the spirit character to shine through, which could be very nice. Uh, with older whiskeys, it just makes sense because it allows the older whiskeys to mature gracefully. It allows them to keep a freshness, a livelihood to them as they get older. 
And with the younger whiskeys, especially in, in peated, with peated whiskeys, is that it lets that peated spirit character kind of shine through on it. So, so without any further ado, um, 10 year old Loch Lomond, again, refill bourbon cask, 56.6% uh, .6 alcohol. Um, here we go. Massive, absolutely massive whiskey. It's incredibly briny. It's it's almost like uh, being on the shore during low tide, but in an inoffensive way. Not you know sometimes you'll be uh, on the shore at low tide if you're lucky enough to live near salt water, and sometimes it smells dank and sulfury and the dankness, the sulfury isn't there, but that heavy salty quality is there. It, it's it's salt wa hot salt water. There's seaweed in there. This is a note that I've got from the very beginning. And interestingly enough, I, I don't eat this stuff. Uh, I used to, but don't anymore. And haven't for almost 30 years. But it's hard to forget. Muscle stew. Cooked mussels in a broth, lots of garlic, lots of butter. That's in here. A few months back, I was in L.A. I'm sorry, not L.A. Uh, I was in San Francisco with some friends, and uh, we went around, did some bar hopping, and I was done drinking for the evening. Um, pretty much a lightweight. And uh, we stopped at a place that had celery soda. I don't know if you've ever had celery soda before, but this is the first time I've ever had celery soda. That celery note, the slight saltiness, the fizziness, again, in here. It's quite wild. There's a, an extra earthiness to it. Um, you know, uh, like a mushroom soup kind of smell to it. Uh, there's a lot going on. It's it's all around the saltiness. It's, it's that salt, brine, umami, seaweed, mushroom. There's a pungency to it, but in the background, along with that celery soda and, and something else, I can't, can't quite put my finger on, maybe like a... Like a baseball card bubblegum note, there's a sweetness that helps to really balance it out. All right, let's give it a taste. Hmm, wow. So that heavy, earthy, wow sort of pungent quality to it has subsided in flavor. It's still there, but it's taken down a notch, and it's, it's definitely more sweet in flavor than it is in scent. I'm still getting those flavors, but there's there's a, sweet, a sweeter element to it. Dried papaya. Um, wow, really oily. A little fizzy, but really nice oily mouthfeel. There's a sweet jalapeno note. Not not the not the heat, but the actual flavor itself of jalapeno is right there. There is a pepperiness mid quality, but again, it's not a heat. It's just this you know peppery um, sort of black peppery kind of hint to it. Wow, the oils are really sticking with you on this. It's really quite a, a lovely, lovely little whiskey. Coming back to the nose after having tasted it, now my mind has sort of, you know, got a little context going along with this. And so it's, it's much sweeter on the nose than it, than it was before I tasted it. But it's still got that 
that mushroom soup pungency, that, that garlic note from the mussel stew is still there in a really fun way. Yeah, a little bit of a Kalamata olive kind of note in there, sort of swimming around with the sweet. Everything's in its right place, though. I know I'm throwing a lot of notes out there, but everything is sort of playing together really, really nicely. And the finish, it's, it's almost sugary. It's, it's confectioner sugar. It's a little more of that jalapeno, sweet jalapeno note. Again, not the heat, just the, the flavor itself. And the finish just goes on. Just nice, sweet, the pungency is gone. This whiskey is, has got this wonderful evolution from nose to palate to finish. It grows, it changes, it evolves but everything makes sense. From start to finish, everything makes sense with this whiskey. Really, really lovely. Uh, you know, this and, and the Buna Haben uh, are two of some of my most favorite whiskeys that we've tasted this year. They've all been, you know, with the whiskeys that we've bottled, they've all been fantastic and all, you know, delicious in their, in their own ways. Um, and I'm so very proud of them. Um, but that Buna Haven, with it being seriously the best Buna Haven I've ever had, and this uh, Croft and Gay uh, or, or Loch Lomond peated whiskey, with it having this wonderful sort of evolution um, of, of pungent and peat and sweet and, 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 and so on, has been, you know, so unique and so wonderful. So really two of my, my favorite whiskeys so far this year. Um, for price on this, you're going to be looking at uh, 105 per bottle, uh, so really approachable for a for a 10 year old single cask uh, whiskey. Um, for those that love the peat, you're going to be really happy with this. For those that love adventure, and and I think that's one of the reasons you're uh, you buy whiskey from whether it's single cask nation for, or from other independent bottlers. If you're looking for that adventure, you'll definitely find it in this whiskey. It's a fun, fun ride. Thank you for watching. Uh, more videos to come as we get uh, more whiskeys um, in-house, and there will be more for 2016. I want to thank you all. Uh, enjoy your summer. Enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. Thanks so much for watching.